In this video, we're going to focus on how to add the Chart.js plugin called Data Labels to Chart.js, basically to your chart. And this will be a series specifically geared to data labels. Data labels are very useful and the plugin itself is very useful. And the main reason why is this. With data labels, and uh, just to let me explain what is a data label. A data label is basically the number what you normally see in the tooltip. You see the values when you hover over a, a chart or a line data point or a bar chart or pie chart, etc., etc. So basically, when you hover over one of the sections, you will see the values popping up. However, right now we are realizing that more and more people use a mobile phone and it is not really mobile friendly to for a mobile user. The main reason is this. When you have your phone, you have to press on a specific part of the bar to show the value because Hoover effect doesn't work. So that is not that mobile friendly, not that practical. However, with the data labels plugin, you can now immediately add them in here. So that's why this has become more better and it's more mobile friendly because now you will see them immediately instead of pressing on every one of them. If you're on the desktop, it's fine. If you're on your mobile phone, pressing on all those different bars doesn't make sense. So let's start. In this part, we're going to focus only specifically on how to add it. And then after I will expand this gradually with different items, because this is really important to understand. All right, to do this, this is my blank file here. And this is the HTML file or the browser here. So what we're going to do first is go to chart.js and we're going to click here on chart.js or get started. I get the I get the latest documentation. I always want to have the latest one, 3.3.2 at this moment. And they're expanding very fast. All right. What we're going to do is here, we're going to click here on, uh, or before we even click on that, we're here basically on the main page here. And then you can see here already the chart information. I'm going to copy this because I will just copy this for now. We copy all of that paste it in here and what I will do is I'll give this a proper indentation all right and then in here we have the canvas what we still need to do now is we have the JavaScript code however what we do need is as well the uh, uh, what is that the JavaScript library so we click on getting started click here again on the sub item getting started and then in here we get the JavaScript library from chart.js copy this paste this in here save that so once we save it and make sure you put it above uh, the JavaScript code so it can read everything all right so once we have this here we refresh and this works all right so we have a JavaScript or chart.js will default by default you get the maximum width possible and right now we have here something but I don't want this I want to remove this but we need to make sure that we have the canvas inserted between a div and this div will be uh, specific in a well, I'll give it a class of chart box but this div must have a fixed width or height main reason is if not then this chart will grow keep on growing into infinity which I don't want so we say here class chart box and in here we're going to put in the value We'll say here uh, with, I'll just give it with 600 pixels for now. Oh, make sure that this is good. All right. Here I realize that we need to put in the style text. Sorry, we have to make sure that this is CSS. All right. So we've got this now. Save that. Refresh. There you are. All right. That looks fine. And that's the only thing what I want to do now. So once we have that, we are done with the chartjs.org website. All that we have to do now is go here to the chart.js plugin data labels so in this plugin we're going to use the rc or the 2.0 rc basically this one here let's click on this you get here all right let's get started on this that's the rc1 main reason is you can see here version 2 version 3 version this might work as well sometimes this version 3 but i don't recommend it just use this one get the most updated one all right and then in here, we're going to follow a few items here. So we have here the getting started. And once we click on getting started, you can see here you have the MPN. And I will skip that for now. And probably very soon, I will make a React version where we cover that one. 
So I want to scroll down here. Once I scroll down here, you will see here the HTML version of this. Here's a fair share of warning. This is not what you need because this is not a JavaScript file. As you can see here, it will just set this and this will give you an error. And this is also the reason why the Charge.js plugin doesn't work. The data, la data labels will not show and you'll be confused on that one. So what we're going to do is, before we even go there, we go to another one. We go to a website called cdnjs.com. Here is the data labels. And here, you're going to get again the RC1 version number two. Make sure you get that one. And then you can see here the options. And what we need is just here, we can use this one here. This is fine. This is the minimized version of the JavaScript, which is exactly what I want. This is version 2.0.0 RC or runtime convict.1. All right, that's the one we need. You can see all the options. And I will say here, copy the script tag. Here we are. Get that one. Scroll down here, or sorry, scroll down here, just below the JavaScript or uh, the Charge.js library. And you put in this one. All right, very important. Oh, sorry, I will pop this, put a proper indentation here as well. Very important here, always below the JavaScript first, and then here the chunk of code. The reason why we do this is because first we need to load the Charge.js library, which is the basic library, because this is a dependent on whatever is in here. Then you put this one in here, and then this will load, and we will also be able to read any commands that are related to this JavaScript library here of the data plugins. All right, we've got this now. We're almost done. Let's start to figure out the, the integration or installation. So we did the installation basically of the HTML file or the script. And then what we have to do is we have to register it. And the registration here, this is the most confusing one before when I started, but it's quite easy if you follow along. So this is basically what we need. You see here the part, it, can, it says here you have to register it, all right? So what we can do here is basically this one here. So you can see here we have the options, the data labels. Well, let's get this here. We're going to copy this, plugins and options. All right. So if you're used to Charge.js version 3, you might be confused. You say options, and then within the options, you can do that. Well, we just put it separately here. Because what we need to do here is we need to make this separate. These are the options. All right. That's it. No, no need for this because we already have this one here. I'll just do proper indentation. There we are. So we've got this here. So what happens here is basically the following. First, because if you're used to Charge.js 3, you will say options. And then you will say uh, plugins. And now it's the exact opposite. Because the reason why is we need to indicate which plugin we're using. So we're using plugins. And then we have, that's why I'm using here a separate section here. So options here, we just close it with a comma, meaning that there's something else coming here, which is this one here. And then this basically would be like that. So we say here options or plugins first, and then the options. Because normally here, if you would do here, you would say plugins. And in the plugins, you would say maybe legend. And then you would say here, display false, for example. That would be an option. There will be a sample here, but here we're doing basically as well again, but then exactly the opposite of what we're doing here. But instead of options first, we say plugins, which plugin we indicate the plugin specifically, chart data labels, and then we say here the options. Once you save this, you go here, refresh. Oh, let's see what's going on here. Did I put a proper comma here? Uh, unexpected identifier here. So we have here, of course, no comma. Save that. Then refresh. There you are. So now we have the data labels being shown. And of course, this is the default setting here. And I'm sure that you might want to control the location of this. But that will be in the next video. Right now, make sure the plugin works and you can see your data labels here. And if we would even do here the line, you will see that this works as well. Save that, refresh here. However, as you can see, the location of it is really at the center of the center, meaning really within the data point here or the center of the bar you can see it's really in the, it's aligned vertically and horizontally or horizontally and vertically aligned in the center of course this might not always be what you want the next video will cover different parts of it we're going to explore it deeper thank you for watching this video and i hope you enjoy it and if you enjoy this video you probably will enjoy this one as well and if you're interested in chart yes check out in the description box the link 
directing to my Chart.js course where you can learn everything about Chart.js. And finally, of course, make sure you subscribe to my channel.